I love science fiction shows. I especially love ones about time travel. When the writer of the show does a great job, the twists in the plot have a way of stretching my mind and opening my thoughts to new ways of sensing time. In October 2015, my husband and I watched the series finale for a time travel TV show called Continuum. The show had four seasons of episodes, and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute, except the last five. I hated the ending. So if you think you might watch the series sometime, this is your spoiler alert. Stop listening for the next two minutes. On a macro scale, the four-year story ended successfully. The main character and her friends created a more peaceful world than the one she left. Mission accomplished. However, on a personal level, the main character unnecessarily lost all of her relationships because of one decision she made to go back to the future instead of staying in the present. From my analysis of this fictional story, it would seem the improved timeline would have been just as likely if she had stayed in the present and helped her friends create a more peaceful future. Instead, she kept wishing to get back to the future and the relationships she was pulled from when she was sent to the past. Her obsession to get back to what she lost kept her from experiencing the importance of the friendships she was creating in the present. Eventually, she achieves her goal of getting back to the future. She returns to the year she originally was snatched out of by the time travel event. She arrives in a world that is no longer at war like it was when she left. However, she learns she cannot regain the personal relationships she once had in that year, nor can she return to the past to live out life with the friends she left behind. So her failure to be present in the moment cost her all of her relationships. Well, at least in my opinion, but you can watch the series to draw your own conclusion. By now, you are probably wondering what this has to do with communion. The question for each of us, individually and collectively, is how present are we in this moment? Are you lost in your memories and longing for days gone by when your communion experience was somehow different than it is now? Are you daydreaming and wishing for some new future that looks and feels a lot different from your current experience? Remembering the past and dreaming about the future are important steps in living a reflective life as a disciple. When we weave our stories together of how the past has formed us and build a communal vision of where the Holy Spirit is leading us into the future, it helps us understand the continuity of God's presence in our story. It also reminds us how our stories weave together to carry out Christ's mission in the world. However, when our memories of the past or dreams for the future overtake us, we are not fully present in the moment and miss countless opportunities. In Doctrine and Covenants 162, we are reminded of the importance of our story and challenged to be present in the moment, especially when it comes to the sacraments. In paragraph 2 we read, Listen carefully to your own journey as a people, for it is a sacred journey, and it has taught you many things you must know for the journey yet to come. Listen to its teachings and discover anew its principles. Do not yearn for times that are past, but recognize that you have been given a foundation of faithful service, even as you build a foundation for what is yet to be. As a prophetic people, you are called under the direction of the spiritual authorities and with the common consent of the people to discern the divine will for your own time and in the places where you serve. You live in a world with new challenges, and that world will require new forms of ministry. The priesthood must especially respond to the challenge, and the church is admonished to prayerfully consider how calling and giftedness in the community of Christ can best be expressed in a new time. You have already been told to look to the sacraments to enrich the spiritual life of the body. It is not the form of the sacrament that dispenses grace, but it is the divine presence that gives life. Be respectful of tradition and sensitive to one another, 
but do not be unduly bound by interpretations and procedures that no longer fit the needs of a worldwide church. In such matters, direction will come from those called to lead. Again, you are reminded that this community was divinely called into being. The spirit of the restoration is not locked in one moment of time, but is instead the call to every generation to witness to essential truths in its own language and form. Let the spirit breathe. Here's what speaks to me in this moment from these words. Our story is important. Where we come from has shaped us, but our story is not complete. It still needs to be written. We can't live in the past, nor can we stand around and just wait for the future. We must be fully present in this moment so we can help write our ongoing story. We must be present with each other and with the Holy Spirit, discerning God's guidance on how we live out Christ's mission today. The sacraments bind us together with each other and with God. We come together to remember our communal calling and are sent to live that calling in each moment in the world. Being distracted and not fully present in the moment seems to be struggles for disciples of all times. There are several stories in the New Testament about how the disciples are distracted from being fully present in the moment. In Luke 22, we read how Jesus tells the disciples that one will betray him. They fail to stay present in the story and get distracted arguing about which one is greater. Later, when Jesus and the disciples go to Mount Olives, the disciples are distracted by sleep, missing the need to be present for Jesus to pray with him. The New Testament also reminds us that when we fail to be present in the moment, we miss what is right before us. Over and over, people fail to recognize the true nature of Jesus and God's kingdom. In John 18, when Pilate asks Jesus if he's a king, Jesus reminds him that his kingdom is not of this world. In Luke 17, verses 20 and 21, we read, Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Today, we are invited to be fully present as we come to the communion table to remember together the incarnate Christ and experience the kingdom of God among us. We are invited to let the Spirit breathe. Surrounding me, there are many different types and styles of clocks. Some clocks are electric, some run on batteries, and some, like my watch, need to be wound. Some clocks run fast and some run slow, and some just aren't running. What all clocks have in common is their mission to report the current time. If your house is like mine, you have a multitude of clocks, and undoubtedly, they don't all report the same time in the same moment. When I'm running late, this makes me crazy because I don't know exactly what time it is and how close I'm cutting it. Nowadays, many people have atomic clocks that are extremely accurate because they daily synchronize with master time stations. My husband and I have one of these in our bathroom, so we know how much time we have left when we're getting ready. Also, many of us use our cell phones, which are not solely dependent on an internal timekeeping app or system. The cell phone synchronizes its times through its cell network. Both the atomic clock and the cell phone clock represent the most accurate time of the network or community. So when I really am running late and am frustrated by the different times presented to me on my various clocks, I trust the time on my atomic clock or cell phone since I know these clocks represent the time from a larger community of timekeeping. People are diverse like clocks. We have different methods that we draw strength and energy, some of us are more prone to live in the past, while others are more predisposed to wish for the future. We are easily distracted from our primary mission to be Jesus' hands, feet, voice, and presence in the world. 
It is hard to be faithful disciples individually, just like it is hard for individual clocks to keep accurate time, like atomic clocks and cell phones that keep more accurate time by staying synchronized with the larger network, we are way more effective in embodying Christ when we do it collectively. This requires us to be synchronized in Christ's mission, so we are sharing a common message with the world. Sharing communion together is our opportunity to synchronize with one another and God. We are able to listen more attentively to one another, to share each other's joys and sorrows. We can bear each other's burdens and celebrate each other's high points. Our stories become woven together and we remember our unity through Christ. We also center collectively on what matters most, Christ's mission. Our calling and opportunity is to be fully present in each moment, not just this one. We synchronize for mission at the communion table and then go to be present with others who need to experience the incarnate Christ. Jesus serves as our example for what it means to be fully present even in the midst of a busy life. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we read about the woman who had suffered for 12 years with bleeding. Mark's gospel provides the greatest detail. From Mark 5, verses 25 through 34, we read, Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said in turn, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. There is so much we can learn from this story, but for today I want to point out how present Jesus was in this moment. He could sense the touch of the woman in need, even with the press of the crowd all around him. I'm sure if I had been there, I would have been like his disciples who were confused by Jesus' question. As I ponder the story, I imagine the woman hoping desperately for healing, but not wanting to draw attention to herself. I sense her wish for just a quick, unnoticed touch of Jesus' robe, and then her surprise when he feels the soft, humble touch. This story teaches us a lot about our opportunity to be fully present in each moment of our daily lives. This makes us available to connect with others that cross our path or those who sit in the pew next to us. It makes us open to the leading of the Holy Spirit so we are poised to feel the touch of another. This story also reminds us of the lonely journey of so many people who are lost and hurting in the crowd. We are sent to be present with others and to feel their touch as they reach out. We are sent to share our stories, listen to others' stories, and invite people to come and see, to come and experience the blessing of community we experience with one another in countless ways, including the sacrament of communion. We have been reminded to generously share invitation, ministries, and sacraments. From Doctrine and Covenants 162, paragraph 2, we read, Jesus Christ, the embodiment of God's shalom, invites all people to come and receive divine peace in the midst of the difficult questions and struggles of life. 
follow Christ in the way that leads to God's peace and discover the blessings of all of the dimensions of salvation. Generously share the invitation, ministries, and sacraments through which people can encounter the living Christ who heals and reconciles through redemptive relationships in sacred community, the restoring of persons to healthy or righteous relationships with God, others, themselves, and the earth is at the heart of the purpose of your journey as a people of faith. Creating accepting, inclusive communities with healthy, strong relationships is such a part of who we are in Community of Christ that sometimes we fail to be fully present and recognize the blessings that we have. Often it takes someone new to our community to reflect to us what they see in us. I witness this happen all the time as people write on the Latter-day Seekers Facebook page their experience when they first encounter Community of Christ. It is such a joy when someone finds acceptance and support with brothers and sisters in Christ who share a unity through the Restoration Movement. One of my favorite examples of someone from outside Community of Christ sharing about us was when the Catholic Sister teaching the Michigan Mission Center Conference about community development said something like this, Community of Christ is to other denominations like Supergirl is to Superman. The S in Superman stands for Man of Steel, whereas the S in Supergirl stands for Stronger Together. I didn't just meet one Mission Center president, I met five ministers serving as a Mission Center president team. You really know how to do community. Wow, what a compliment. We are stronger together, and we do know how to do community. Communion is the sacrament that binds us together as a community and synchronizes us to collectively live Christ's mission. So no matter whether you're prone more to remember the past or dream about the future, no matter whether you've been running slow or fast or just not running, this is your chance. This is all of our chances to be fully present in this moment to let the Spirit breathe as we remember, repent, forgive, connect, and synchronize. But don't stay in this moment because then you'll be stuck in the past. We need to keep on ticking and creating our story together as we share the peace of Christ with others and invite them into sacred community to live Christ's mission in the world. Onward.